Part 3 of What is Sin? 1 Timothy 4, 1-2 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, lying and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Many people have consciences that are seared, rending them ineffective, leaving them unable to discern between good and evil. What does it mean to have a seared conscience? It means that the spirit for conscience is a part of the spirit, has been tarnished or perverted. It is being led by the flesh or atomic nature instead of being God-led through the Holy Spirit. A person with a seared conscience cannot tell the difference between right and wrong from God's perspective. If a person's conscience is seared, their spirit is dead to God. Understanding the seared conscience concept allows us to see more clearly the meaning of Proverbs 16 verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The heart is often used as a synonym for the soul or innermost part of us. I am grateful that the word of God is able to separate the soul from the spirit. Proverbs 4 verse 23, Matthew 15 verses 17 to 20. He knows our hearts and gives us time to repent. To be complete persons, we need to have head knowledge, but this knowledge must become part of our heart so that we might experience the truth. Once we move head knowledge to our heart, we will be set free from Satan's power and achieve total victory over him. John 8 verses 31 to 32. The spirit and soul will live forever. The body will return to dust at death. But all believers will receive a new glorified body, like the one that Jesus had after, he resurre after his resurrection. In his new body, he ate, walked through walls, and traveled instantly from one place to another. The second heaven. Scripture doesn't speak specifically to the existence of a second heaven, but Paul said he was caught up into the third heaven. 2 Corinthians 12, 2, the realm where God resides, Jesus referred to it in Luke 10, 18. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. If there is a third heaven, it follows that there must be a first and a second. The physical world, planet Earth, is the first heaven. Ephesians 2, 2-3 Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Satan is called the prince of the power of air. He is fallen and he is a fallen archangel that seeks to do evil in the hearts of the sons of disobedience. Satan rules this world in the earth from an invisible plane called the second heaven. 
not located in the physical world. I have never seen Satan. I have never seen a demon either, but I sure have dealt with them. I have cast demons out of people and heard them talk to me through people. I told them to be quiet by the authority of Jesus Christ and they have obeyed. Scripture clearly shows that there is a physical and spiritual world. The spiritual world is invisible and home to the fallen angels or demons. Using New Age psychic techniques, modern man has found ways to tap into the second heaven. People who practice such techniques allow demons to overtake them and rule them through psychic power divination, fortune telling, and lying signs and wonders. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9 The devil uses humans to do his deeds on the earth. Satan and the demons usurped the God-given rights of man when Adam sinned when Adam sinned. Sorry. Satan became the holder of the title deed to the earth and became the god of the world or mankind. He began to rule in the earth through the men he manipulated or influenced through his demons. If these demons don't already control someone, they seek to influence or tempt them through spiritual attacks. Referring to Lucifer, Ezekiel 28.13 says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. There are several important points in this verse. First, we see that Lucifer is a created being, an angel of God, and had both spiritual and physical body. Lucifer wore on his body all the jewels and precious stones that provided his covering. It is my opinion he lost his physical body when he sinned and became known as Satan. Every example of demons in scripture is one where the demons or demons were manifesting through a person or animal. They searched out human or animal bodies to inhabit, control, or manifest their nature through. Therefore, I do not believe that the fallen angels or demons have a physical body of any kind. This is not true of angels that still serve God. These are at, there are at least 104 examples of angels appearing to men in Scripture. Hebrews 13, verse 2.